What is New School Dance? New School Dance can be broken into two general terms, Hip Hop Dance and House Dance. From the late 80s, dancing with Hip Hop Music and House Music developed a new school style of Hip Hop and House Dance, which soon spread over all of America and then was launched upon the rest of the world. The one person who is said to have helped start the spread of Hip Hop is Stretch from Mop Top's Elite Force who joined the old school dance styles of popping, locking and breaking with the new school dance style. Now he is seen as the creative originator of what is now known as Hip Hop Dance in general. Eric B and Rakim, Michael Jackson, Diana Ross and Mariah Carey are just some other top artists who have used Hip Hop Dance in their music video releases. They all continue to have an influence on the world scene, also helping to create new moves. To continue, the one man who helped establish the street dance scene of house dance was Khalif. He was a member of Mop Top's Dance Fusion and witnessed the early times of hip hop. He is seen as a big representative for hip hop culture as a whole. In the 90s, Shishi Penniston was the first to use house dance and from then on saw many other artists using the dance in their music videos. It started in America and with the help of these people spread to Asia and Europe through workshops and they are still helping house dance to expand. Another original member of Mop Top's elite force, Link, had a strong helping in seeing new school dance spread throughout the world. Other top artists like Michael Jackson, Mariah Carey and Will Smith have used it numerous times in their music videos. Now it is being used in showcases and workshops around the world, keeping its vitality in high action. These people, because they are the originators, need to be recognised. That is why we are going to make the history of the new school clear for you. People want to know their history. You know, you can't know where you're going until you know where you've come from. What people don't, don't seem to understand is that wherever the music takes off, there's always a dance to go with it. Let's get back to the dancing. People really want to learn, you know, what the dance is, what the vocabulary is, what the culture behind it is. And that's a, a, a resurgence in the new school across the board. So we're going to discuss the origins of hip-hop as a culture and hip-hop as a dance. Hip-hop culture started in the uh, South Bronx, 1973, in the Sedgwick and Cedar Houses. And, uh, you know, it came out of Black and Latino culture of the 60s and the 70s. Hip-hop as a dance comes, you know, from uh, the same culture, you know, uh, in the 70s before they actually called anything hip hop. It was just, you know, different parts of the city had their own expression of hip hop culture. In the Bronx, they had b-boying and, you know, MCs and DJs. But in Brooklyn, we had, you know, what was called, you know, it was b-boying in the Bronx, but in Brooklyn, they called it the freak style. And then uh, we had, you know, in, Bro in the Bronx, they had rocking. And in Brooklyn, we had our own version called the Brooklyn Rock. And that all gave way to the culture of, uh, you know, hip hop in terms of, you know, once it caught on to the mainstream. And then hip hop dance came out of the uh, exploitation of, you know, the hip hop culture. After the movies, Beat Street, Breaking, Breaking 2, you know, all the commercials and tours, you know, the dance aspect of it i.e. b-boying, popping and locking kind of died, you know, died down. It was considered played out. So uh, uh, what happened was a lot of the dancers that were uh, uh, either poppers or b-boys, you know, just got into just strictly dancing, which is just straight social dances. And what happened was after the, you know, the Beat Street era, as we call it, 
uh, we just started taking those dances and combining them all together. And, you know, as the B-Boys, you know, like to call it freestyle. But we just called it hip hop. And the reason we called it hip hop was because those dances that were, that were being done at the time were all done to specific hip hop records. You know, what separates hip hop dance from b-boying is because b-boying was done to breaks. Breaks and funk. Now, the breaks came from funk records, from salsa records, from rock records. But hip hop, you know, when you did the WAP, you did it because B-Fats made a rap record, a hip hop record called Do The WAP. You know, we did the, the Happy Feet to Dougie Fresh, the show. You know, you do, do the James Brown to Super Lover C, and you know, they did a song called Do the James. So you did the James Brown to that song. So basically you had, basically you had songs that had dances to the song. Exactly. So when those songs came on, you did that dance. You didn't do no other dance, just that dance. It's like later you start adding different steps and changing the step and doing it different ways. But whenever that song play, you can play that song today. And people who know that, that dance, automatically goes to that dance. And what happened was, being that a lot of the dancers uh, came out of the, you know, came out of popping or breaking, you know, those elements remained mixed with the social dances. And that's how hip hop came about. And uh, when we all got together, we just took, you know, everything that we all did, you know, uh, and just, you know, it was a mix and match and a mash of every style. And that's how hip hop came about. And the same thing with house. You know, house culture comes from, uh, you know, the disco culture. And, you know, it's, it's sort of the younger cousin of hip hop. But, you know, it, that's why, you know, they, they call uh, the styles that we do freestyle because it's a mixture of styles. You know, it's in, and, but all styles are basically the same. Free, they, they're freestyles, they're social dances become, before they become styles. And uh, so around, you know, the late 80s, the mid to late 80s is when that whole, the Beach Street era died down and the hip hop era started. And in the 90s is when it flourished, you know, and exploded and became a national scene and then an international scene all the way to, to now and today. And as the music changed, you know, the dances changed. I just think people, you know, tend to forget why they got into this culture in the first place. You know, and we never have. You know, we got into it because of the music and the love for music. And I think that's what's missing. You know, it's an art form. And, you know, people, you should treat it as such. What's up, y'all? Buddha Stretch, Elite Force Crew, Mop Top. What's up, Link, Elite Force Crew, Mop Top. We're here in the park in New York City, and uh, what we're trying to do today is to give a little history of hip hop dance, you know, so you know what the names of the steps are and the history behind them. We're right here in uh, Lower Manhattan near uh, a bunch of uh, clubs that we used to frequent. So, what we're going to try and do is uh, break down a few steps and the history behind them, like the Smurf, the Prep, you know, old school street dance, rather old school social dance, you know, that primarily made up what we call hip hop today. So what we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna show you a dance called the Smurf. It's from uh, the uh, early 80s. It's just a, really a street and social dance and uh, got incorporated into hip hop. Uh, in the late 80s. This is the Smurf. Smurf, yo. What's up, y'all? This is Link from Elite Force. What I'm about to show y'all is a dance from the mid 80s, and this dance is called the Prep.
That's the prep. What's up, y'all? So this next dance is called the Reebok, named after the Reebok shoe because it was popular at the time and everybody uh, wore them and you know came up with a dance and named it after the shoe. <laughs> This next dance, this dance is called the WAP. Where it came from, ask him. All I know is called the WAP. It's called the WAP because it was made after a record called Do the WAP by B Fats. And yeah. uh, when the record played, you did the dance. And actually in the record, he told you how to do the dance. That was like what a, a lot of dances, they told you how to do it. That's the walk. What's up, y'all? So this next dance, it's called the Cabbage Patch. Uh, it's named after a, a toy, a doll, in the early 80s. It's social dance incorporated into hip hop. What's up, y'all? Back again. This next dance is called the Happy Feet. I guess when you did it, you looked so happy, your feet was moving everywhere. Can't tell you where it actually start and come from, but I can tell you this is the name of the dance. And the dance was done to uh, primarily to Dougie Fresh, Fresh the show, Rick, the slow, the show. When that song came, came on, on, everybody, everybody did, this did, dance. Did, did this dance. It's called the Happy Feet. Last dance is called a fila, uh, and in Brooklyn they call it the Rambo because uh, a lot of people got robbed to this song, <laughs> and a chant of "Go Rambo." When you heard that, you knew Somebody, something bad was yeah. going to happen. <laughs> so it's originally called a fila, but you know some places they call it the Rambo because you know Brooklyn was in the house. <laughs> Now you see a whole group of people doing that around in a circle, Move. look out for your chain. <laughs>
songs that we didn't know that were in between the middle until we got deeper into the culture. And that's how we got involved with house music. Well, um, the, way, the way I got introduced to house music was um, a good friend of mine and Lynx, um, out in Canarsie, his name was um, Buddy. And this was a guy who used to frequent the garage. And he used to play music, a DJ at the house parties that we used to have at the house now. When I say the house parties, I mean not the house music that you know. This was a, a party in our apartment. We'd clear all the furniture out in the living room and throw a party. Like, oh, Friday night, we're having a party at my house. So everybody would come. And what he would do is he would sneak the house music in with a lot of disco. He would play some disco music. He would play uh, the popular hip hop and reggae. And then he would sneak the house music in. And that's how we got introduced to it because we were already open off of songs that were kind of like borderline. Songs that we didn't know that were in between the middle until we got deeper into the culture, you know, the music. And then that's when we wanted to hear more of that music. And that's how we got involved with house music. When did it start? Oh, when, well, when I came to No House was like around 86. But um, I'm quite sure that House had existed far long before that. So I would say maybe mid 80s. Yeah. Early 80s, around like, you know, from what I heard, you know, 82, 83, 84, it was still, you know, perceived as disco but it started to take off and then the, the, that around that time by about 84 85 86 is when it you know the house sound was born and you know as a dance the culture came out of that you know uh, they used to call it club music too yeah. cuz they used to call house dancing club dancing yeah. because this was the dance that you did in the club and that was the music that you heard in the, in club, the club so they called it Club if it music. wasn't R&B and it wasn't yeah. hip hop, they, yeah. you know, they didn't have a name for it, so they just called it club music or, you know, popular culture dance music. Right. Now the term house is from uh, Chicago, and it was named after a club called a warehouse, and it's where uh, the sound is, you know, was formed, or I guess, and with. Uh, what was it, Larry LeVan, and most most of the popular DJs at the time played at this club, and the, they, they dubbed the music that they played because it wasn't disco anymore, but it wasn't, you know, and it wasn't hip-hop, it wasn't, you know, just R&B, so they dubbed it House after this popular place that they, because this is where that music became, you know, people would, they would make tapes from the, of the music at this place, and, and people would buy the tapes, and they would, you know, where you get this tape from, oh, it's from the warehouses, you know, warehouse music and house music, and that's what they called it. And, you know, the dance was, you know, the dance is named after the music. Well, the fashion back then is, like, most of the clubs had dress codes. So you couldn't go to a club the way I'm dressed right now. You couldn't go with sneakers, jeans, and Baseball cap, t-shirts. So we had to dress nice. So you had to have, like, a nice shirt, a decent pair of pants on, slacks, preferably and you know people wore started wearing ties and then like like stretch was saying the other day we used to wear jabot pants a nice pair of shoes zodiacs or doc martens some shoes had the metal on the front some some shoes didn't but you know that, that you had that look on your feet and on your legs and then you had a nice shirt and a short tie not a long tie a short tie no, no jacket but just the vest yeah and then that became the uniform. Whenever somebody saw a short tie vest, the, the Jabos and the Zodiacs or the Martins, you were a house dancer. They automatically knew. You they were a knew. club dancer. And you know, you knew where this person was going based on how they were dressed. You knew what clubs they went to, what they were into based on, you know, how they were dressed. It's the same as like in back in the days in, in locking. The lockers were dressed a certain way, and when you got to the spot, you knew who was locking and who wasn't. Well, it's the same thing in house. Another another popular you know thing uh, in the late '80s was polka dots. You know, people used to rock polka dots. You know, it, it just became yeah, little dots, big dots, yeah, ties and all kinds of stuff, and also uh, suspenders and uh, you know blazers. You know, in the hip hop clubs, you didn't have a dress code. 
but in in the in the R and B clubs or in the you know the popular clubs that didn't play just hip hop, they didn't want the street element. They wanted people to come. No hats, no sneakers. Yeah, no jeans, no sneakers, no hats. So you had to dress up. You know, you had to look. You know, you know, like you know, not like you were you know coming off the street, but you were coming to party. So that gave birth to a whole culture of you know dressing a certain way to go to the club. You know, it wasn't. You know, people wanted to dress up. It was, you know, you had to, and it just became, you know, a culture by itself. Yo, what's up? We're here now, and we're, we're going to talk about old school house. And uh, what we're going to demonstrate today is. Uh, some of the steps in house, the names of the steps and how they're done, you know, the uh, late 80s all the way through the 90s to now. So we're taking you like from like Studio 54 when Larry LeVan left the garage and moved to Studio 54 and one of the steps that they were doing around that time. So we're going to go into that and then work our way on to something else, right? Yeah. <laughs> And some of the clubs, you, you got to understand that here in New York City, a lot of the clubs that played hip hop also played house, just on different nights. Like Studio 54 had, uh, house was on Thursday, right? Yeah. They had hip hop on Wednesday. So, you know, a lot of these clubs also like Nels, Nels played house and they played hip hop. The Red Zone had a hip hop night and a house night. And a lot of the dancers migrated from hip hop into house. Also, because house was a lot less dangerous. Right. <laughs> and they closed down a lot of the, the house clubs, I mean, hip-hop clubs anyway. So yeah. a lot of the hip-hop heads became house heads because there was no place to go. So right now, we're going to demonstrate some of the steps. And one of the first steps I'm going to show is called stomping. Alright, this next step is called a loose leg, primarily named after this gentleman here, Loose Leaf. Uh, it was one of the steps that he always did, and uh, it was such a, you know, foundational step to everyone when we saw him do it. We all copied it. So, it's the loose legs, big leaf. Loose leg. The next step that I'm going to do for you is called the train, which is a variation from the skate. They're both related. Train and skate are related to one another. So this is the train. Next step is called the farmer, and uh, Khalif is going to explain where that the name comes from. Well, actually, the name was something that we had as Dance Fusion. We had a meeting in 2000, and we decided to call the step the farmer. Um, the origin of the step is from Africa. It's originally an African step, but we've adopted it in house, and we call it the, the farmer. farmer.
Obama. The next step that I'm about to do for you is called the swirl. Uh, the swirl is a variation of uh, a samba step from Brazil. It's fairly similar, and uh, you'll see the, how it's uh, merged into house. This is the swirl. So this last step is called a jack-in-the-box. It's originally a step uh, created by Khalif's brother, Ramir, and Which Way Shah. Which Way? Just playing around in the club, and we all watched them and followed, and, you know, and later on it was called a jack-in-the-box. So this is what it is. Jack in the box. really was established, you know. Right now we're going to discuss uh, what would be considered, you know, in hip-hop terms, the middle school, you know, middle school hip-hop dance. You know, from, say, 1990, 1991 to, like, 1997, something like that. In the, in the, the early to mid-90s to the late 90s. And, uh, at this time, is you know, this is what I refer to as the video age, because prior to that, there wasn't there were no video. Yeah, there were there were plenty of videos, but there weren't as many. Not you know, Very during many. the '90s, everybody had dancers. They used dancers in damn near every video, and hip hop really, you know, was established as you know, a force. Like this is the dance. It was all over the world, and, and you know, everybody saw it. So I. I you know, the middle school time is what, you know, I like to call the video age. Because prior to that, there were videos, but, you know, there were only a certain videos by certain artists. By the mid-90s, all artists had dancers in their videos. In the early 90s, I like to call it, you know, the DOS Effects era, because <laughs> that's when everybody had dreadlocks, yeah. you know. And uh, everywhere you went, DOS Effects was so popular, if you had locks, they would be like, ah, oh, they, they DOS effects. They straight yeah. from the underground, blah, blah, blah. Well, Millie Vanilli is prior to that, you know. But, you know, 
I like to think of around that time as the Timberland age. It's when everybody right started there. rocking Timbs. You know, prior to that, you know, only some folks, you know, wore Tim, but everybody started everybody rocking Tim's. Tim's, cross then, colors, yeah. Carl Canal, Carl Canal. Tim's and hoodies. Yeah, hoodies. Tim's hoodies. Sweatshirts were big. Sweatshirts and baseball caps, you had the hoodie over with the cap. Your, 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 your pants hang yeah. low, your Tim's on. Carhartt you know, jacket. Carhartt. TLC you know. made a song, right? Hat yeah. to the back. Hat, hat yeah. to the back. Hat to the back, pants yeah. down low. Oh, Polo was in, you know, for forever. forever. Yeah. Polo's really Polo old school. Polo and Guess? Polo and yeah. Guess? Yeah, that's from the, from the 80s. 80s. That's from the 80s, but they still and maintain. And surfaced in like 90, 90 Also, 92. yeah, that's the, uh, this era, the middle school era is the Tommy Hilfiger era. Yeah. Because right. that's when Tommy Hilfiger took off. Yeah. yeah. Without, you know, that time, you know, you know, that's the era where Ralph, Ralph Lauren gave way to Tommy Hilfiger. Right. Prior to that, it was low, 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 low. low. Yeah. In the 90s, it became Tommy, Tommy Hilfiger. Hilfiger. You had the, you know, everybody had the backpacks, you had the jeans, Need the that. jackets, the, 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 the uh, bubble, bubble yeah. uh, vest, you know. You had was, something, and then every, if you didn't have, you ain't have Tommy, you had Helly Hansen. Yeah. yeah. The you, ski wear, ski wear was, was, you know, huge at that time. Spider. Yeah, yeah, Helly you know, Hansen, Spider. We was wearing stuff that you wouldn't think they would wear yeah. as a regular dress code, like a regular clothes. Some they wear on only on slopes and skiing. Yeah. We North was face. wearing to the club, North Face. Yep. That's when uh, you know the East Coast, that whole dressing style, it's all, all East, East it's Coast. all New York. It's all East Coast. And you can see that it spread from New York all the way down. Atlanta, everywhere, and it was, you know, when you dressed like that, you knew you were from the East Coast, because the West Coast, you know, they dressed completely different. You know, they didn't dress, they had the khakis, yeah. the chucks and all that. We didn't rock any of that then. So, you know, that was, you know, the, the real, you know, underground, straight, street head. You knew this is a hip hop cat. And that's when, you know, mainstream America really, you know, wanted to be down with OPP and all of that. Yeah. <laughs> So right now we're going to demonstrate for y'all uh, what's considered the middle school. Uh, steps that were between, you know, old school and new school. What we consider old school hip hop and new school hip hop. These steps were done in the, you know, early 90s through to the mid, you know, towards the end of the 90s. And the first step we're going to demonstrate, it's called a crisscross really, but we called it the party machine because it's, it's a TV show uh, that came on late nights on the weekends and this is the one dance that everybody could do on that show so we called it the party day the party machine which stretch is about to demonstrate stretch Machine. What's up, y'all? So this next step is called the Running Man. It's right. It's basically the bridge between the old school and the, and middle, the school. middle school. And uh, it's based off of a movie by Arnold Schwarzenegger called The Running Man. And it's uh, just basically a step that makes you look like you're running, running. in place. Right now, we're going to have Link demonstrate some variations on The Running Man. That's the running man. What's up, y'all? So 
right now we're going to do a <laughs> dance called the Roger Rabbit, which is uh, based on a film, you know, Who Stole Roger Rabbit? Uh, and it's basically uh, the running man done backwards. And we done. All right, this next dance is called a Steve Martin, based off the comedian Steve Martin on Saturday Night Live. And it was uh, created by a dancer for EPMD by the name of Steezo. Link's gonna demonstrate. Steve Martin. Yeah. So, right now we're going to do a, a <laughs> dance called the Bart Simpson. It's from uh, ATL, it's Atlanta, and it's uh, based on the character Bart Simpson, the Bart Man. Uh, we did this this dance yeah, in the uh, Remember the Time. Yeah, in the video with Michael Jackson, Remember the Time. Well, wait while you do it. Show our variation how it yeah, how we did it, versions. then we changed it. This is the original way. This is how we did it. So, next dance is called the Pepper Seed. It's one of the uh, dances from dance hall, reggae, and it shows reggae's influence on hip hop. Link's gonna demonstrate. So this next dance uh, originally didn't have a name. It was a dance that I made up mixing the Steve Martin with the crisscross or the party machine. And we called it the BK Bounce because we all from Brooklyn, Brooklyn and we put it on the map. So I'm going to demonstrate it for you now. What's up, y'all? So, this next dance is another dance from dance hall and reggae. It's called the Butterfly, straight out of Jamaica, and again shows reggae's influence on hip hop. We're going to demonstrate again. together. That's the butterfly.
this is house, you know, was established what the movements were at that time. And this is house dance. Right now we're gonna speak on, you know, house dancing from the 90s, which in hip hop would be called a middle school. Well, actually at that time, the music was kind of changing because at first in the 80s, you had a lot of music that was coming from Chicago. You know, that's where it started, Chicago and in Detroit. But a lot of producers from New York as well as New Jersey started to become more popular. You know, like Junior Vasquez, he had a song out that was pretty hot at the time. And then you had a bunch of people like Camacho and um, yeah. just to name a Javon. few, Jovan. That, well, he's from Brooklyn, Javon is from Brooklyn, but you know, um, Camacho's from Jersey, they, they, they were really, really making a lot of good, good music. And, and so we had like a lot, a lot of East Coast flavor going on here. And that's the thing that kind of changed from the 80s as opposed to now more producers were coming from this city and they were really representing. I think at that time was when House had, uh, around the early 90s, 90, 91, 92, was when House really hit mainstream. You had, you know, uh, House videos, you know, big, you know, mainstream house records like uh, Crystal Waters, Crystal Waters, which C. C. You know, we, we, we worked with Khalif Dance for CeCe Peniston had finally, we worked with her, you know, uh, and um, around that time is when house had gone mainstream, you know, it was across the board, across America, and it was, you know, you know, people in middle America knew, they called it dance music, but they knew what it was, you know, and, and then that's when the, the steps kind of like, came into you know their own like this was it you know specific steps were considered house yep you know it wasn't you know no longer oh this is part of hip-hop or blah 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 from this is from that this is house you know yep. it was established what the movements were at that time and in the 90s is where the movements were established that this is house dance especially amongst the dancers yeah. you know more so than the public. Yeah. Because the public kind of like just thought every type of dance they see is break dancing if they're yeah. not from here. The, <laughs> the public started seeing it as they house dances was because the way we were dressed. You know, we didn't wear the sneakers and the baseball caps or any of that. We wore blazers and ties and yeah. hard bottom shoes. You know, style of dress is what really differentiated the culture from, you know, other cultures, from the disco era, from the hip hop era. House had its own culture. Yeah. You know, people rock specific shoes. You had Doc Martens that were big. The jeans at the time were Jabot. Jabot. Everybody rocked Jabot yep. jeans, you know? And, you know, you dressed to go to the club. Had you a wore, small tie on. Yeah, you had ties, you had button button up shirts, you had blazers on, mm -hmm. you know, you didn't wear baseball caps, you had, you know, Hats, you know. People used you, to steal the Volkswagen signs. Yeah, we have the, the Volkswagen sign and put them on their shoe, the shoe or around their neck, you know. So, and that's when you know it was established that you know when you saw people dressed like this, you knew where they were going. You know what clubs they were going to. They house heads, you know. Wasn't house dancers. You were house, house head. House you know? head, grasshoppers, bango yeah. bango heads. Bango yeah. bango. Yep. That, that's what they used to call us back in the day. <laughs> What's up, y'all? With a stretch. What's up, Big Leaf? We're standing in front of the legendary Tunnel Nightclub at this place. You know, they played house first before they played hip hop. And uh, this is one of the places that uh, I actually met up with Khalif and Link. Yo, this was a spot that every Wednesday night people came to on a, for a college night. And this is where some of the best dancers in New York City came to get down at that time. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna share with you some of the dances that we were doing at that time. We're gonna show you the, uh, one of the first steps is a salsa step. It's uh, derived from its name. It comes from salsa, but we do it to uh, house music.
salsa. The next step I'm going to do for you is called the salsa hop. And I'm going to do a couple of variations of the salsa hop, but I'm going to start out with the basic part of the step. All right, this next step is a dance we call the sidewalk. Actually uh, comes from tap dancing, but changed it up for house. And Khalif is gonna demonstrate. This uh, dance that we did, it was called a sidewalk. I'll explain this because it's like you're walking to your side with a kick. It's from tap and called it the sidewalk because you're moving in different directions, you know, side to side. Uh, the next step is a variation of the sidewalk, which is what we call the crosswalk. You cross in front and not behind. And I'm going to demonstrate. Take it away. So the sidewalk is here. Crosswalk is in front. Crosswalk. All right, this next step is called the crossroads. It's a traveling step. It's uh, similar to what they do in uh, top rock and b-boy and in jazz, part of a ray across the floor. So Khalif is going to demonstrate that for you. All right, this next step is called the setup. It's called the setup because you use it to set up your moves and it's from a, a, a tap dance step, which is a variation that we use in house. Uh, basically, it's a skip and a hop and it's called a setup. Set up. That's the style walk. Crossroads.
We're dancers. I'm a dancer first. You can put the style any, anywhere you want. Um, to explain the, the, the difference between us as, you know, hip hop dancers, house dancers, whatever, those are labels. And people like to stick labels on you so they can, you know, uh, understand you better. But the whole point, uh, uh, the difference between us and everyone else, I would say, is we never looked at it as, oh, I'm a hip hop dancer, or I'm a house dancer, or I'm this or I'm that. We dance. You play the music, we dance. If you play house music, we're gonna dance house. If you play hip hop, we're gonna dance hip hop. If you play electro music, we're gonna pop. If you play something funky, we might start locking. We might start breaking. You know, oh, we did what. Go back old if you played, you yeah. Mm -hmm. If you played reggae, we're gonna start Don't doing reggae. Too. Right. You do what the, the music dictates. And that's what I think people, you know, a lot of people come up with these labels because they can't do that. Like if you say, uh, oh, Link is just a hip hop dancer, then you only think, oh, well, if you play hip hop, he's cool. But if you play, you know, if I play, you know, looking for the perfect beat, Link can't dance. Nonsense. If you play looking for the perfect beat or planet rock, Link will still get up in your ass. <laughs> okay? so. You know, or like, oh, Khalif is a house dancer. Oh, so if you played Pete Rock, Khalif can't dance to it? Nonsense, you know? And that's the, the, that's the problem with the labels. Like, you know, it's what people, you know, they forget that before it's a style, it's just a dance. You know, before locking was called locking, Campbell locking, he was doing, you know, the robot shuffle and the funky chicken. There was a social dancer. All dance is social dance. Before it's a style, it's a dance, you know? And we always put style second, you know? Dance was always first, the style was secondary. And a lot of that had to do also with, in the house culture, you know, when we came into, when I got into it and I met up with them, we were always deemed as hip hop dancers, you know? And then, oh, those guys, oh, they're not house, they're hip hop. Yeah, but get in a circle with me and then tell me what I'm doing. You know, and a lot of those people that were, oh, they're hip hop, they don't dance anymore. No. We're dancers. I'm not a locker, I'm not a popper, I'm not a hip hop dancer, I'm not any of that. I'm a dancer first. You can put the style any, anywhere you want. You play the music and I'll dance to it. And that's what defines me, the music, not the labels. I would say the new school era starts at the turn of the century, really. Right now, over the last, I'd say, six, seven years, hip hop has branched out and become, you know, I mean, it, it's been a, you know, multinational phenomenon, but the music, you know, at one point, New York was the center of the universe for hip hop. And then that shifted to, you know, to the West Coast. They had their moment. Well, now it's the South's moment. And in all of the South, that music is hip hop music. What people don't, don't seem to understand is that wherever the music takes off, there's always a dance to go with it. And most of the new school dances have come out of the South because that's where the music is. That's the most popular music. And whenever there's a popular music, there's gonna be a dance to go with it. Exactly music and dance are yin and yang. And each region has their own kind of music. You know, case in point, New York has our hip hop. Uh, Atlanta has their sound and their dances to go with it. Houston has their, their sound and dances to go with it. You know, the Bay Area has their own thing, you know. You know so yeah, Chicago has their thing. So, in, you know, it's hip hop because of the music and the culture, but each place has their own thing you know, what they call it. Like in Chicago, they have their, you know, footworking and their music, you know, is juking. And then in Memphis, they have a different style of juking. And then uh, in Atlanta, they have, you know, their dances in, in, in the 
Bay Area, they have a, what's called turfing or hyphy, you know, and if you look at it, it looks similar to, it's just basically hip hop, but it's just their way of doing it. In South Central, you know, that's where crumping comes from. What do the crumpers dance to? Hip hop, you know, and the movements are all similar, you know, but for each region has their own sound and their own, you know, mini culture, but the culture of a whole, as a whole is still hip hop. You know, that's what, you know, is considered the new school now because, you know, each place puts their own stamp on it and brings their own, you it's know, that actually, thing to it. It's like in a, a good way, because actually it's almost going back to what we said in the old school. When you heard a song, you knew the dance. Exactly. Because now it's like, it's more like, it's like artists is making songs with dances. Yeah, they're making a dance to go with it. Case in point, Soldier Boy. Yeah. His whole, the reason that record it's took so, off is because he had a dance, dance to go with the Called the Soldier record. Boy. You know, and he filmed his own video and put it on YouTube to go with the song, and the song took off because everybody did the dance. And, you know, and, 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 yeah, and Soldier Boy, chicken noodle, soup. chicken noodle Soup, Walk It Out. Yeah. Everything is coming back to what actually, what Missy started saying first to all entertainers, let's get back to the dancing. What she said to, you know, on her song, you know, enough with all that other stuff, let's get back to the dancing and partying. Yeah, the reason why, reason we, why, do why we do and, hip hop. You know, the new school is just, you know, if they're taking it back to how it was done before, you know, you had specific songs that had specific dances, well now you still have specific songs that have specific dances to go with them. And that's what keeps the culture alive and keeps it popular and keeps it moving, you know, and keeps the, the, the creativity and, 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 you know, the culture alive. And that's what makes it fun. It, it, it's always, for me, it's really fascinating to see a new dance and have to learn that dance. When I first saw the Harlem Shake, I saw my nephew do it. And I was amazed, like, what is this? Like, you know, when I saw the videos, I was like, eh. But when I saw my nephew actually rock it, I was like, now this is nuts. The dance, what saves the dance is the kids. You know, the kids, uh, they take a dance and they show you how to do it. And right. you really see the essence of the dance because they really feel the music. If you really want to see what hip hop is supposed to look like or the feeling of it, just play the music and watch the kids dance. And that's where the inspiration comes from. What's up, y'all? What's up? What's up? So right now we're in Fort Greene in the park where we shot yeah. a live TV record shop in live. Brooklyn, you know, back in 1992. So right now we're going to run through some of the new school steps that have come about since around 2000 to now 2008. Uh, a lot of the hip hop steps are not from New York. They're steps that come from other cities in America that uh, had hip hop, you know, their own hip hop culture that have been adapted, you know, across the board. So one of the first steps is called the Monastery. Monastery from St. Louis. From St. Louis, it's named after a club called the Monastery. And uh, a girl in the club is who made up the dance. The guys were imitating her and then the dance took off and everybody started doing the dance. Link is gonna demonstrate. All right, this next dance is a gangster's dance. Gangster. Uh, meaning real gangsters, Crips. Meaning don't do this dance in LA, <laughs> some parts of Brooklyn, some parts of New York, because they don't take it as a dance. Now first off, it's called the C walk. The C is for the word Crip. Crip, uh, crip 
is a uh, gang started in the 70s in Los Angeles, opposite of the Bloods. And the Sea Walk is the, the Crips dance. Uh, it's the dance that represents the gang and, you know, the culture surrounding the gang. Not only that, you know, God rest the dead, peace to Skeeter Rabbit, who told me this dance was a setup dance when they were about to fight or after they finished fighting. So do not do this dance in certain places because you might be the, the dance. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to demonstrate in memory of Skeeter Rabbit, the sea walk. Walk. All right, so this next dance is called the Bankhead Bounce. It's a dance out of the Bankhead section of Atlanta in uh, the South. And this dance came about in the uh, mid 90s. It's done, you know, in celebration of the Dirty Dirty. And it's one of the, the first dances to come out of Atlanta that. Uh, you know, gain national recognition. Link is gonna demonstrate. Bankhead bounce. Alright, this next dance is one of the newest dances from the Dirty South called the Walk It Out and uh, I'm going to demonstrate. Alright, this next dance straight out of NYC from Harlem. It's called the Harlem Shake. Made popular from a, a an old school dancer called Al B. R.I.P. Uh, he did a dance called the R the Al B and the Harlem Shake came out of that dance. And Link is gonna demonstrate. Harlem Shake. Shake. All right, this next dance is called the ATL Stomp, straight out of Hot Atlanta, and uh, it's one of the newest dances that's come out in the last year or so. You can also see this dance in Usher's video, yeah. At the end, they, they tell you ATL Stomp, so you so, can see that. And I'm going to demonstrate. All right, this next and last dance is from New York City, again from Harlem. It's called the Tone Wop. It's a dance coming out of Harlem over the last couple of years, and it's gained national recognition. You can see Chris Brown do it in the uh, running video, and uh, we both are going to demonstrate. Tone Wop. 
already shot. What the culture behind it is, and you know, that's a, a, a resurgence in the new school across the board. We're gonna talk about 2000 to now, and what happened with 2000, um, well, I would say like from 99, the late 90s house had a decline. It wasn't as popular, it wasn't as popular in Asia, it wasn't as popular in America, and there was just like, you know, it was dance fusion, you know, the, most of the people from fusion, we were the ones still carrying the torch, pushing it, still trying to teach it a lot. A lot of teaching was done in Asia, but still it was kind of dying out. What went on here was um, Tony McGregor, Which Way Shah started to jack. And when they started, when they started to jack, because jacking was something that wasn't done back in the days, this was something that they started in 2000. Jacking, the term jacking means fucking in the club. That's from Chicago, that's just a Chicago term. But they took that term, being Shah, Which Way Shah, and Tony McGregor, and also Brian Green. And what they did with that is they came up Developed a motion. Move, with a motion, a movement. Now, how it, was, how it was explained to me with this movement, and this is important, was that they were trying to figure out how can we teach people who don't listen to the music and people who aren't on beat, how can we get them to understand the feeling of the dance? So they came up with that movement but with that movement, a very important thing happened. It became popular. People all over wanted to become a part of house because the people who did hip hop, they kind of saw a similar movement in what they were doing and that's how they were able to, to make the crossover. Like we say, we're all dancers, but then there's certain movements like the Roger Rabbit, like the Criss Cross, skate. that skate, that crossover from dance to dance. So that was a movement that people who, who, who mostly listen to hip hop could really vibe with. And like I say, it became popular. So that, that for us, it kind of changed the dance. So we had to adapt with the times where we were doing mostly footwork. Now we add a little, little bit, mixed a little bit of Jack, what we call Jack in to the dance and that that changed the dance from like from what you see now i don't know now it's it's just it's prevalent it's everywhere you know and so that i think that's that's a good thing for me because more people are interested in the dance and now we can kind of like guide them because now once they've learned that now they want to go back and learn about the foundation just to pick up on what he was saying i think the you know, again, the, the dances are tied to the music. The decline of house music also led with the decline of the dance because a lot of people weren't listening to house, you know, like it was in the early 90s, in the late 90s. I think turn of the century, you know, house picked up uh, in Europe and in America with uh, a different sound, you know, a mixture of electronica, and a more tribal sound, you know, drum, and then the, what, you know, what they call the uh, broken beats. You know, a lot of uh, house picked up because they started doing what was called broken beats. Now that whole broken beat culture came about, uh, you know, alongside the whole jack thing. So you had jacking and the broken beat, and when you brought that together, the culture came back full, you know, full throttle. That and the tech, techie, yeah. techie music, like yeah. producers like Theo Parrish from out of Detroit. Yeah, with that whole, a lot of you know, love. that electronic sound, yeah. you know, that, that would, that's what brought house as a music back, and then the dance came back with it, you know, on top of that. So what happens now is people, uh, you know, they, they look at what they see as house now, and they see similarities to other dances, other styles. And then that's, you know, to get people to get into something, you gotta give them a point of reference. So a lot of people's point of reference in house is through hip hop, you know. For b-boys, it's through breaking. Alongside of, you know, the resurgence of uh, house, where a lot of b-boys were going to the house clubs in the mid to late 90s. 
a lot of b-boys got into house because they wanted to learn you know the tops you know the top rock and house you know was so you know it, it, it appealed to b-boys because they wanted to learn how to get you know how to dance you know and a lot of the b-boys uh, the younger b-boys I, I use you know like breaks crew and um, step fiends as an example those are two crews out of here out of new york uh, they had a lot of b-boys and uh, that got into house and started mixing the top you know tops and the steps of house with their breaking and so one in particular shan s who always he, he was a b-boy first you know he took, you know, the b-boy that he knew and mixed it with his house also and took house to another level. And that led a lot of other people to, you know, do the same. And this was all around the same time, the late 90s into the turn of the century. So a lot of factors contributed to what, you know, you see as a new school house resurgence. But again, it's always, you know, some of the same people, you know, involved in that. You know, a lot of the things like, I'll use case in point, a move that comes from gymnastics that went into b-boying that crossed over into house, the hollow back. You know, uh, the first time that, you know, Kat saw a hollow back was b-boy float. We were doing a, a video for Mariah Fantasy and float, a lot of people don't know this, but float was in that video. And what happened was float was doing all kinds of hollow backs. Ejo is who saw the hollow backs that Float were doing and, and Float showed him and Ejo got into it immediately and started rocking the hollow backs, you know, and then other cats seeing Ejo do that, you know, started that. And that's how, you know, that came into house alongside of the same thing with like Capoeira. You know, when B-Boys saw a lot of the Capoeira moves, you know, they saw the, the similarities. Well, house dancers saw a lot of the similarities in the Jenga in, you know, in house, you know, and so each each style influences the other you know when you go back to that whole labeling thing you can't label a, a person you know as something unless you know what that is if you label you know somebody a hip-hop dancer you have to actually know what hip-hop dance is if you label somebody a house dancer you know you got to know what house is house has its own vocabulary and culture you know a, a, a lot of uh, misconceptions have happened over the years here in america you know, turn of the century again, where a lot of guys uh, dancing to house music in the club and are called house dancers, but they're not doing the dance that we're doing, you know, and that's another thing that had to be corrected. You know, I, I've seen videos on YouTube of cats, oh, this, he's house dancing, and blah, 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 and I look at that and they're just jumping around. And I'm like, that's not house, not house. House has a culture, it has vocabulary, it's, you know, it's the same thing, you wouldn't see it, you know, you don't call somebody that does this a popper <laughs> just because they did a wave, you know? So, you know, that's another thing that's, that's, that's going on in the, in the culture now. People really want to learn what, you know, what the dance is, what the vocabulary is, what the culture behind it is. And, you know, that's a, a, a resurgence in the new school across the board, not just in house, but, you know, b-boying and popping and everything. People want to know their history. You know, you can't know where you're going until you know where you've come from. What's up, y'all? What's up, y'all? We're in uh, Fort Greene, Brooklyn. BK. Uh, this is the park where we shot a live TV record shop from Brooklyn, 1992. And uh, we're back here today to show you some more steps from house. Uh, one of the steps we're going to show you is called a tip-tap-toe. It's basically uh, on your heel, and you shift your weight from your heel to your toe to the beat. And I'm going to demonstrate it. Tap toe. This next step is called the scribble foot. And um, you basically scribble your name on the ground with your feet. Khalif is going to show you how.
All right, so right now we're going to do one of the steps that crossed over from hip-hop. Uh, in hip-hop, we kind of called it the party machine or the crisscross. And for house, we call it the crisscross. And uh, it's a little bit different in house because of the tempo of the music. And Khalif is going to demonstrate. All right, this next step is called a heel toe. It's uh, originally a dance from reggae that crossed over through hip hop into house. And it's kind of uh, done different ways. Um, I'll demonstrate how it's done to reggae and then uh, the hip hop version, which you, we also do to house. It's kind of like the James Brown. All right, this is another step that has crossed over from hip hop into house. It's the Roger Rabbit, and uh, Khalif is going to demonstrate. It's still done the same way in hip hop, but uh, a lot faster because house has a quicker tempo. Alright, this is, next dance is called the skate, uh, yet another dance that crossed over from uh, uh, hip hop into house, it's an old school social dance, uh, you mimic skating in a roller rink but without skates, it's called the skate and I'll demonstrate. All right, this next step is called a dolphin. It's from a uh, original house dance style called lofting, which is basically uh, a sister of, of b-boying. As b-boying went with breaks, lofting went with disco, which gave way to house. And it's uh, basically a dive, and it, you know, the motion is uh, like a dolphin diving in the water. So, thus the name, the dolphin. And Khalif is gonna demonstrate.
my message that people people have to realize that this is you know dancing is a spiritual thing too and it's, it's something that you know it's your self-expression you you're telling your story when you dance and when I'm what I mean by that is by copying some someone you need your own identity when you're out there and we all have the ability to have our own identity you know and as far as teaching is concerned I said it once I'll say it again teaching this art form takes time if you take a class for a year I don't care if it's with me if it's with Shanness if it's with Brian Marjorie anybody that's teaching house you need more than a year before you go into another room and try to show somebody the movements. If you do not know the foundation, if you have not mastered any of the foundation, then I don't understand how you can go and teach. Teaching is more than choreography. Choreography is something that is done in an hour and a half. People gather that from you, they'll know it like two hours after that. Three hours after that, they can't remember what they learned or the day after. That's no good. You have to give people things that they can grow with and you have to be able to give them the information. If you're not able to give them the information, then they won't be able to grow as a dancer. Peace and love. Remember that this, this, this art form is not about battling. This is about love. If you listen to the vocals and the music, they're not telling you to hurt or harm anybody. They're speaking about love and upliftment. And that's all it's about. And that's all I gotta say. I, for one, I respect all styles. But no matter what you say, all styles, it's all dance. Dance is before the style. Learn that first. And then once you learn that, you learn what you're doing. You can't say jazz is hip hop, hip hop. This is, this is hip hop, this is hip hop. No, hip hop's hip hop. Lockin's lockin', poppin's poppin'. Ballet's ballet, jazz is jazz. But they all just dance. And get out of the mirror because everything you do, every mistake that's been made is a new dance step. So if you don't make a mistake, you ain't bringing nothing new into the game. You're not, you're not helping hip hop. You can't clean it up. It's, it's meant to be raw and, you know, dirty. dirty. It's not meant to be neat and tight and, you know, clean. Yes, yeah, you got clean dancers, you got, you know, they, some say sloppy dances, but for me, that's abstract. That's that's what, you know, that's their real feeling. If you're in the mirror, you making a feeling. And you're trying to, you know, clean up something you're doing wrong, but if you actually look at it, the wrong thing you're doing is thinking about doing it. You're not feeling it. That's, that's the first wrong part in any dance. If you don't feel what you're doing, you're wrong from starting. So my thing is get out of the mirror, go in the club, go with your friends, make them dance. Get away from the bar sometime. That's my thing. My message to uh, the dancers and the, all of the people that will watch this video, read my shirt. It says, I am hip hop. What does that represent? You represent the culture. Culture doesn't represent you. You represent the culture. Whenever, everything about me is hip hop. Everything that I do is hip hop. And I actually care about that, that statement. You know, I don't, this isn't a stepping stone. It isn't, I don't do this for attention or to make people like me. I really don't care if you like me. I could care less. And I'm quick to give you the finger. So, you know, for me, it's not what I do, it's how I live. You know, if you're interested in the culture as a fad, cool, do you, that's cool. But don't come around me because, you know, I live this and, you know, if you really want to be a part of the culture and represent something, don't represent it from here, represent it from here. Take it away, Hank. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Set up or shut the f <laughs> for the music, to the music, and because of the music. Add him to me the information. Show them why we give ourselves five, because we know that we back the five. You were peeking, and the lockers took it, put it in the dance, and called it the snake. The reason why they call it CCs, back in the day, Legs was in a crew called Crazy Commandos. People have known it as windmills, but it's called continuous backspin. Oh, or we uh, refer to now as Boog Style. But uh, it was created by Balloon Sam, my brother, in 1976. It was basically went from the waist down, but also up. Uh, it came up when uh, 80, like around 80, 81. して見ること知ることのないその裏側を歴代ジャパン王者たちが解き明かすヒストリーオブジャパンダンス時代のヒストリー女の子もだけでも全然負けたくないっていう野望が出るそっからさらに自分たちの居場所をなんか見つけられる熱くなる見つかり合う目指した人だけが取れるっていう誰が勝つかもまに分かれ経験ダンサーとしての職業の可能性